All right, guys, let's waste some money doing an experiment. And that is, I'm going to see how long a propane tank lasts running this generator, running the air conditioner of the RV. What have you been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. Right now, it's just afternoon, uh, about 12.10. And as far as the runtime on the generator, we'll look at the hours on that and see what it says. 2.1 hours. So 2.1 run hours total on the generator. I'm going to open this thing up and give it its full tank of gas. This propane tank's completely full, completely full. It's brand new. So let's see how long this runs and we'll run the air conditioner. I'm gonna hook that up and turn it all on, put it on econo mode, cause it will run the air on econo mode and we'll see how long it lasts. So it's been a little while, but I want to keep you updated. We've got 88 degrees outside, even though the high was only supposed to be 87. I did put a cover over top of this to make it show a, you know, a little bit cooler. Keeps the sun off of it directly. The propane, the tank is cool, but I think it's still about half full. And we'll go inside the RV here. You can hear it's running kind of quiet because it's on economy mode because the compressor is kicking on and off because we're at 68 degrees inside. Yeah, this thing's uh, <laughs> definitely cooling stuff off. Then we got a fan here running. I do that to keep the bathroom cool. So, yeah, 68 degrees. Uh, still going strong and. I still think that we still have a few hours left in this thing for sure. You can see it's 316. This clock was reading 1210 whenever I started this whole process. So kudos to the generator running on propane so far. Um, it's holding up. Let's go ahead and uh, check this out a little bit later. It is 425 and we had a high today of 90 degrees. We hit 90. Um, we're hovering right around 88, 89 now. Um, again, the dew points are really low though. Uh, this thing obviously is still running. And yeah, the tank is still pretty darn cold. Feels like it's a little bit lower though. Feels like I'm right about here, I think. But yeah, still running. So let's go look inside. I don't remember, let's see, 1210, yeah. That was the time. It was 12.10 on this clock. And like I said, you can see it's 4.27. And it's a refrigerator in here. It's 67 degrees. <laughs> so this thing's been humming right along and doing a very good job. Like I said, 88 degrees outside. Um, and we're at 67, so we're a 21 degree drop, which 15 to 20 is about average. And yeah, not bad. It doesn't feel bad at all in here. Of course, the refrigerator is not plugged in or anything like that. It's not turned on, but very, very pleasant. Now, I just posted the video of the generator, and let's talk about that. The video that I posted that you've already watched, most likely, if you guys are following along with us, uh, man, did that thing go long. It was way longer than I wanted, but Honestly, I wanted to cover all those points. I wanted to show you what I did. I cut down a lot of the stuff as far as the generator running and me doing sound tests and all that um, because I was trying to show you a really easy comparison if everything went smoothly. But once I had to replace that hard start capacitor, that changed everything. Of course, I wanted to show that repair because I was experiencing it. So. I've got some other parts of this generator install that I want to talk about. Um, first thing I'm going to show you here, uh, which is some photos that I took, is of the hour meter. Um, this is something that I'll put the link down below of this video also. And it's very inexpensive. I think it was $10, uh, maybe $13. It wasn't very much. It's an easy install. You just take the, the wire, as it's shown in the uh, pictures here, it, you know, it just wraps around the spark plug lead a few times and then you uh, tie it off with a wire tie, which they provide. And then you just have to find a location for the uh, gauge to be mounted. And then in my case, I went ahead and put some monster tape 
uh, duct tape, Gorilla tape, whatever you want to call it, that's what it is, Gorilla tape, uh, down to hold uh, the wire, just keep it looking a little neater and out of the way. Uh, although Heidi didn't like it, she said she'd rather see the wire. Um, I just wanted it to where it didn't get snagged on anything. So that was one thing that I, I didn't get a chance to show uh, that we did. Uh, the other thing was is after the uh, initial running, which is uh, just over five hours, I did change the oil and even though I didn't show the oil change procedure, it's very simple. Uh, you just take off the uh, engine cover uh, to get to where you add the oil and there's a, a tube that goes up to a plug that stands off of the valve cover and that hose just clamps to it. it it's a great design. Uh, you just undo the clamp, which you could pretty much do with your fingers if you really had to, but better with a pair of pliers and uh, move the clamp off and as soon as you lower that hose down low enough the oil starts coming out. Also on the bottom of the generator is a plug that you can push out if you want to drain it out that way. So if you have the generator mounted up somewhere kind of high and there's an opening underneath that you can access, uh, you can run that hose out that way. Uh, I don't necessarily see a reason for that, but I did tip the generator on its side to allow the oil to come out and uh, make it to where all the oil came out of for the initial oil change. Normally for oil changes, I don't really care if there's a little bit of residual oil inside, but the initial one, I want all those metal shavings out. Um, now, I don't need to change the oil, even though I put synthetic in it, I don't need to change the oil for another 100 hours, um, other than what we've been running today on propane. Um, yeah, I've got 100 hours that I can run it. I think that I'm going to do the interval probably half of that. I'm going to wait uh, maybe uh, 50 hours uh, and I'm going to change the oil again just in case the break-in period uh, that was the initial break-in period didn't get everything, didn't get all the metal shavings out. Uh, this will definitely you know, make it to where at that point 100 hour intervals will be dead on. And with that meter attached it's going to make it a lot easier. Uh, as far as mounting in that, we're going to talk about that in the future. Uh, Heidi and I is discussing a lot of different things. You know, if I mount it off the back of the RV, it, it's a, a good possibility, but the thing that I have to do there is add weight to strengthen the bumper because those bumpers can't handle the weight. Um, that's going to be extra metal that's going to be hanging off the back. It's going to make the camper a little bit longer than what it currently is, which I do like how small it is. Um, although that may not be too much of an issue, it's still, I like how short the, the RV is. Uh, and like in the case of when we went down to Guilford, uh, that uh, tree would have played havoc if I had a generator <laughs> hanging off the back. The other thing uh, that you've got to be worried about is uh, once the generator's on the back of your RV and secured, uh, you got to make sure that it's secure so somebody can't steal it. So now I've got to look at some sort of an enclosure. Of course I would do some sort of a metal enclosure that's going to add more weight. So not only do you have the weight of the generator but you have the weight of that metal enclosure over top of it and you have the weight of all the metal that you've added to the bumper to support. Well all that takes away from not only your carrying capacity of your RV but it takes away from the tongue weight. The last thing you want to do, like I've mentioned before, is add weight to the rear of your RV uh, and not balance it out and keep the correct percentage for your tongue weight because uh, that's how fishtailing happens. That's how you get some unstable towing. The other thing is I've got to add a propane tank to the back of the RV then to run the generator. I mean I could tie into the gas line somehow but it's already regulated, it's just not a good idea. So I would have the weight of, let's keep inventory here, the extra metal brackets, whatever that may be, that have to be connected to the frame to help support the bumper. Then I would have to add the weight of the generator, then the weight of a metal box for the containment of the generator, and then the weight of a propane tank. That's a lot. That's a lot to be putting back there. It still can be done. It's still a possibility. The thing that's really keeping me away from that is two things. Other than what I just mentioned about the weight and adding all that extra metal back there. When we sleep at night, that means the generator would be right over our heads running. 
the generator's quiet. I don't know if it's that quiet. And I don't know if I would like that vibration going on right three foot from my head. That's a possibility that uh, we may not want to venture into. The other thing is I have a trunk on the back of the RV that opens up and accesses underneath part of the bed. And I wouldn't be able to get to that unless I made the storage containment unit on the back of the RV where it would swing out of the way so we could open that door. Again, I don't know if I want to do that. Now the good points, the, the nice thing about having it back there is that it's pretty much out of the way for the most part and that makes it to where my electrical cord can come out of its little pocket, little door area, containment compartment and it can plug right into the generator. So I don't have to do anything special as far as wiring. It would be right there. So that's a plus. Now, the other thing that we can do is mount the generator on the tongue of the RV above the propane tanks. The thing I don't like about that is whenever we open our window road cover to be able to look out the windows, it's going to most likely hit that generator. So we would have to find a way to get around that. Um, I could make it to where I slide the road cover off, open it, and then slide it back. But I don't know if I want to look at that generator through my window then. I mean, it's going to take up a good portion of it. Now, as far as dimensions and everything like that, uh, let me give you a real rough. 20 by 20 by 28 long. So it's 20 tall, 20 wide by 28 inches long. That's not true dimensions. That's safe dimensions. If you got real tight and real confined, you're talking 19, 19 by about 27 and three quarters, somewhere in there. Uh, so I just rounded it off and went a little bit bigger. That is a tough dimension to work with. Now, we've also talked about doing other things like relocating the propane tanks in their own sealed compartment inside the RV that has an outside access door. That's a little bit of work. It could be done. Um, and that would give us the freedom to put it out on the tongue low, but then we'd have to worry about our snap-up brackets. So we'd have to make whatever we put the generator box on be able to shift to put the snap-up bracket up on one side and then shift back the other way to be able to snap up the bracket on the other for the weight distribution. Once those are up, we can make the height high enough that it would clear those posts that you use for the lever for the uh, snap-up bar but I don't know if I want to do that and the main reason is this I would have to run some sort of electrical line all the way through the RV or under the RV and wire in a separate port or connection for that generator to plug into and then have a switch over box in the back that I could switch over to either the cord that plugs into the RV park or switch over for the cord that runs underneath the RV to the generator that's going to cost a little bit of money and that's going to be a little bit of time and, and involvement there. Now, the other negative, and this will be the last negative, is that the exhaust, the fumes running of this generator, just like it would be in the back, might be an issue if we weren't running the air and we were just needing to charge the batteries. Because that means then we might have the windows open and the exhaust won't be necessarily routed the way that it should be. However, they make devices for that. They make this thing called a Gen Turi, and that is a, a pipe system that lets you vent away your exhaust from your generator up and above the coach. Uh, the other thing that I'd be concerned with is the hot air that's coming off and maybe entering into the RV again if we're only charging, running it to charge the batteries. Now, as far as the plus, my propane tanks are up there. Even though I wouldn't want to run off of one of the propane tanks that's supposed to feed the RV, I wouldn't care at that point because it's so close. It would make it to where I wouldn't have to carry a third propane tank on the RV. But then again, that's only if it's mounted up high. If it's mounted low, then the propane tanks would be inside the RV. I'd have to run a separate hose for that and connection for that. So. A lot of considerations and the more and more I think about it I'm thinking let's just throw it in the back of the truck and find out what we run into and deal with it at that point point. and since we're not going to be keeping this RV for a long period of time I really don't think I'm going to go through all the trouble of doing any kind of special modification just for that reasons 
Uh, I mean, it, it doesn't make any sense, but it's still a thought. And you never know. I mean, as far as a project goes, it doesn't take very much for me to get motivated to do a project. You guys that watch us know I do quite a bit. So we'll let this go. And uh, hopefully all this information that I've given you has helped you out. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm still very happy about the generator purchase, the decision to stay with just one generator, the decision not to get into a Honda, which would have been roughly $1,000 more, or a Yamaha, which would have been roughly $1,000 more. We'll have to see how long this thing lasts. But right now, as it stands, I could buy two of these for what the price of one Honda would be. So I'm really happy about it. It's quiet. It's not as quiet as the Honda, but it's darn near. And for the extra money, again, I think I can deal with that extra noise. It's not annoying and it's not abrasive in any manner. I, I'm really happy with it. Uh, it's a good design and I like everything about it. Uh, again, running with one single generator, having one engine, all that stuff, I'm happy about that. But as far as storage and mounting, you know, uh, and security, even though it's just one generator, it is a bigger unit. So it does keep people from wanting to steal it. However, you know, they still can steal it. But I only have to worry about the one. Now, if I had two smaller ones, uh, which, you know, the smaller ones, you're still talking a pretty good size. They are more than half of what this generator is in size. So you would have basically the same size divided in half to put in two different places. You know, that, that compounds a lot of things. But you to run in parallel, to run the air, I mean, all that stuff, it's all considerations. So what we're doing right now is we're just waiting for this thing to run out of propane. So we'll wait till this thing runs out of propane and I'll tell you how long a full bottle, a 20 pounder, lasted. So let's just let it keep on going. I'm enjoying 68 degrees in here. It's nice. All right, well, we're still at 89 degrees. It's uh, just after six o'clock, actually 616 to be exact. And the thing's still running. Let's feel the tank. Oh, you can see now, possibly, the level of the propane. I don't know if you can tell that on camera, but it's right here. It's because there's moisture. So, I still have that much liquid propane in there. And this thing's just humming right along. I don't need this cover on here anymore because the sun has gone behind my truck. Yeah, it's still going. Just like the Energizer Bunny. Let's go inside, see how things are in here. 67 degrees inside. 67, how nice. Oh, I forgot I left that light on, whoops. Oh well. <laughs> and uh, yeah, fan's still running. Yeah, everything's normal. Uh, after the initial setting up of this thing and having the problem with the hard start and all that, uh, I am very pleased. I mean, the possibilities, it's just going through my head. It's just crazy because, again, this allows us to go RVing and be out in the middle of nowhere. The only thing that's slowing me down to be in the way I want it to be is, uh, you know, of course, mounting the generator, as I keep on talking about that. But the uh, water, putting a water tank in the back of the truck, which I have a pump for since I took the water pump out of the RV here when I replaced and put this one in. And uh, yeah, that's it. So all I gotta do is get a, a big water tank for the back of the truck and I can head out and stay out and boondock for a while. So uh, all pluses for sure. We're gonna keep on running. And as soon as this thing runs out of propane, I will uh, update you. What I'm fearing is if it continues to go into later into the evening, we're not supposed to drop very low as far as temperature wise, but as the night gets cooler, if this thing's still running, um, the air conditioner's got gonna have to run as hard to maintain the temperature that it's currently at, so the generator's gonna have even more longevity than it currently does. Now, the one thing that I'll say is, I could have consumed more propane uh, by taking it off of econo mode and making it run, you know, full blast. Even though it doesn't need it to run the air conditioner, I could have done that. Uh, maybe in the future I might do that video, but I'd hate to burn another, 
you know tank of propane just just to show that I mean that's another you know fifteen dollar experiment I guess <laughs> but it's still something that I might do uh, just to see worst case scenario so yeah I looking back now maybe I should have done that hopefully this isn't too disappointing for you I, again I know that I could have done some things a little bit different to make it a little bit easier and a little bit more scientific but uh, I thought running the air on max on a 90 degree day uh, would run that compressor and that generator pretty hard but unfortunately or fortunately however you want to look at it uh, I want to look at it fortunately um, it's not running it that hard it's keeping it cool and I'm not burning up a ton of propane so we'll just keep on running this and, and see how long it goes. All right, guys, the shadows are getting awful long on the ground, and this thing is still running. I think I'm going to call it, though, because I came out here and I moved it around a little bit, and it's pretty light. There's still some condensation and stuff on the side, but, I mean, there's still some in there. I would expect it to be right about here. But you can hear it's hardly got any load on it because, well, the air conditioner, it's been keeping it so cold. Hell, it's 66 in here now. <laughs> and it's just because of the time of day. I mean, it's pretty much done. Yeah, you can see the temperature, 66. It's nice in here. And here's the time, 756. So, I've been running the air since 10 minutes after 12 and here we are at 82 degrees at 8 o'clock at night and it's 66 in here it's been running all day I don't know I think that it's probably safe to say that this thing will run uh, definitely for seven hours full blast or eight hours like I did today I mean it's it's run eight hours on a full propane tank now as far as my sleep boy if I could get eight hours sleep I would love it <laughs> so uh, just picture yourself wanting to sleep overnight and uh, wanting to run your generator and I'm sure this will do it it's just I'm not gonna run it anymore <laughs> it doesn't make any sense at this point so let's go ahead and turn off the air I'm going to turn off the fan back here. Yeah, it's nice and cool in here. Very, very comfortable. Uh, the batteries are at 13.96, so it's been charging the batteries pretty well. That's good. Um, yeah, I like I said, I don't see much need uh, to run it anymore. All the water's coming off of the top of the uh, RV now. See how many hours the meter says. 9.9 .9 hours so that's good like I said um, I think that's good enough let's go ahead and turn this off I'm happy with that result again nothing but pluses it's like uh, a bird crapped on it though <laughs> I do want to get some sort of a cover. I, I don't know how to do that yet. and We're still talking about that amongst ourselves, Heidi and I. Next time I do some sort of experiment, hopefully we are out boondocking somewhere, out maybe in the desert, to where this thing is under a really heavy load and it's running, you know, as much as possible. But it's right in line with what I thought. I figured that it would run about seven hours, maybe seven and a half hours on propane, and, and here we've gone eight but it's been up and down, you know, and that's really how you want to break in the engine anyways, uh, as far as having it fluctuate in between, uh, you know, different RPMs. You don't want a steady RPM under a high load. You want it to bounce around so the piston rings have different levels of uh, heat put to it, different speeds, and also uh, during you know vacuum cycles inside the cylinder to cause the rings to move around it, it just is the best way to do it all right guys quick update um, once this thing was disconnected from the generator and I could pick it up and swing it around this thing has still got quite a bit of propane in it uh, this thing is at least to here probably closer 
to right here. I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of hard to see in this little screen if you're seeing the same thing I am. But there is a line here of condensation. And that is definitely where the level is for propane. So I'm thinking this thing could run uh, at this rate. It could run at least another three hours. So yeah, 10 hours time. Hmm. It just keeps on getting better. <laughs> I didn't really, uh, really thought I felt that much as far as weight. And whenever I picked it up and started sloshing around, it's like, boy, there's a lot of sloshing going on here for a tank that's supposed to be kind of empty. So that's nice. Uh, I think, again, that we could probably run another three hours uh, at the current load that it's at. So 10 hours on a propane tank, uh, that's amazing. Um, I'll have to go through the book again and look at the specs, but yeah, definitely amazing. I, I'm very happy. You know, I don't know about a lot of you, but I find myself sometimes in analysis paralysis. And I didn't want to pull the trigger on this generator. You know, I I was holding off. I thought, you know, maybe I can find a great deal on a Honda 3000 or the Yamaha. Uh, you know, because it's better. It's a little quieter. It's, uh, you know, more money and, and better support system. But, you know... I, I just put it off and put it off. Finally, I decided to go ahead and get this generator, and man, I'm so glad I did. First of all, the relief of knowing, yes, we have the generator, we can go. We can go do whatever, which doesn't mean we're going to. We want to, doesn't mean we're going to. And also, once I got it, I mean, everything about it, it's, it's fine, it's great. Uh, it's quieter than I expected. I knew it was a little louder than the Hondas, but it's quieter than I expected. And as far as this performance now running on the propane, it's much more than I expected. So, way plus, way plus. All right, guys, I'm going to let you go. This has been a long day again, and I'm uploading that other video that uh, you guys have already seen at this point. It's a long one. I don't want to make this one that much worse. So, I'm out of here, and as always, we hope to see you out there. Bye.